women in music. This is Lydia Great Tricks on Gorgeous FM. Hello, good evening. You are listening to the Women in Music show on Gorgeous FM. And now it is time for the Woman of the Week. And this week it is singer-songwriter Eva. Um, Eva's powerful voice mixed with raw, truthful lyrics make absolutely beautiful listening. And I'm so glad I've got the chance to share her story with you. Um, Eva grew up in Newcastle-upon-Tyne, singing in open mic nights um, before moving to London and pursuing music. Um, It's not been easy for her along the way and being an artist in lockdown certainly hasn't been ideal for her either. Well, currently um, at home with my mum and dad, um, we sort of drove back just before Christmas. It was, yeah, it was before the new restrictions came in. I was just determined to get home for Christmas to be with my family because, yeah, what a year. But um, so, yeah, we kind of got stuck here, but we're heading back uh, tomorrow to because we need to work we need to get with the, in the back in the studio and get some stuff recorded so um it's been all right I'm just bored but where did this love of music come from that you have because oh my gosh your voice is just oh like mind blown oh Not thank you voice. can I have it please <laughs> <laughs> yes take it I'm gonna get an ordinary job because it'll pay better um um you know what I don't know because you know and you, you when you I hear stories of artists are like, oh, I was really exposed to cool music growing up and it was just really... But I, I was exposed to music in, in, a, in a very folksy kind of way. Like my, my, we have a caravan in the northeast and all our families and friends would get together in someone's caravan, like my cousin's caravan, and the guitars would come out and people would start singing. And, and I remember some of my earliest musical memories are in that setting. So like I remember hearing a minor chord for the first time and being like, ooh like that and sad song I think oh god that that really touched me in a way that the other songs didn't um and I guess I was exposed to things like um more like Lonnie Donegan and sort of skiffle stuff and like just sort of cover like your dad playing a cover song that he's played the only song that you can play on the guitar for 20 odd years you know um and then I think I just realized I could sing and but I did love singing and I was like uh, insanely shy and so I started doing like drama classes and stuff came out my shell a bit and then realized how much I actually loved performing and it was just it was always in me and it was something that at first getting over the barrier of being like petrified of speaking too loudly saying the wrong thing was actually oh, a feeling of utter freedom so I guess it's just been like a lot of grafting since then just trying to get your voice heard like as much as possible mm, and yes Maybe I, maybe I assume, I don't know how people start, but like doing open <laughs> mic nights maybe or just oh, yeah, singing yeah. as much oh, as you can. Yeah, when I when I dropped out of uni, I came home and um, my dad was like, okay, well, 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 I'll take you to some open mic nights. We'll go together and make it a thing. So I, at one point I was doing like on a Monday, Monday night at Maggie Bank, Tuesday somewhere, it was Stein Beer Keller on the quayside or something. And then there was one at the... Trent pub I think it's called it's the hospital and then uh yeah I was doing like maybe five, four or five open mics a week just and there was one in, like just obscure pubs in the middle of nowhere you know just wherever there was an open mic I would I would get up and just pra- it was just really good pra- practice really it's like when comedians do like little comedy clubs and test out their material it's a bit like that um so yes, open mics, and then and then eventually, yes, someone asked me to do a support gig for somebody at the Clooney, which is like a, I don't know if you've ever been to Newcastle, but it's mm-hmm. quite a good grassroots venue. Mm-hmm. A lot of like touring independent artists play there, so I started doing um, a few support gigs there, and it kind of just went built. At least into your music, it's completely different to what I've heard before, and I was just wondering if you had any kind of like artists that you're inspired by, or sounds, or genres. Mm. that you're inspired by with your own music or I mean Radiohead um, Radiohead is like the primary go-to for me mm. I just think what they make is well, go, it's transcendent <laughs> um, without being hard to connect to and the way Tom York delivers his lyrics and his vocals is so otherworldly um, but just like the the way they construct songs and the way they put instruments together feels very raw even though 
the, the thing I wanted from my music was that it would be organic with touches of like electronic production and stuff. Um, a bit like what they do, but I couldn't, as much as I'd written Fountain of Youth, we kind of sat down, me and my partner sat down and sort of fleshed out these parts again. And that was the first time I'd written that way, um, changing chords and changing melodies. and Because uh, usually I just sit with a guitar and I just write whatever comes out and that's how it stays. I couldn't have expected Fountain of Youth to sound the way it does. Your favourite woman in music, though, that you picked. I'm so happy you picked this person. <laughs> Joan is peaceful woman. Oh. I have been singing this song all week christabel as someone my mate one of my mates recommended it to me a few years ago and i was like oh yeah i like this and then i didn't listen to anything else <laughs> and i think at the time i just wasn't ready for it and then and then i've just been delving in a bit more deeply recently oh my god god this is really good and the melodies are just amazing the harmonies and the way, the way she delivers stuff just so coolly like so she really sits back and and let the, the 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 chaos around her kind of speak for it, and then when she does let rip, it's like oh, really nice. That's the jazzy tones of Joan as Policewoman with her song Christabel. Uh, Joan as Policewoman is the artist picked by this week's Woman of the Week, Eva. Um, And it wasn't actually in the final cut version of the part you just heard, but Eva also told me that she loves Kate Tempest um, and she loves Anna B. Savage and she's told everybody to check them out. Um, And as you may have seen in the news this week, the government has launched an inquiry into how streaming services are affecting the incomes of people who work in the music industry. This is a topic that Eva is really passionate about because now she is about to tell us how much she's earned from one song being out over on streaming services. I've had a song out for two years and I've only paid myself something like £600. That's, that's not even a wage. Mm-hmm. And that's that's the money I've paid myself. I owe myself about two grand, two and a half grand. Gosh. So even if you think about it, like okay, if I if I didn't if I didn't cut it down to how much I've actually paid myself, because I have to pay, um, produ- I have to pay mixing engineers, mastering. I have to pay uh, make like fees and stuff, recording fees, session fees, studio fees. Um, so of the total amount that I've actually been paid from streaming, it doesn't even equate to three months minimum wage how am i supposed to survive on that <laughs> so that's why and it's also when you when you open up a spotify like new release page it's all the likelihood of all of those artists being on warner sony or um universal are very high because they own the the majority so it is really rubbish um, but they can change it. They can change the platform to to be fairer, so that they're not losing out. The majors don't have to lose out, so the independent artists can can thrive. Have you had to actually change how you pay your bills, like what you do to make money as an artist because of streaming? We invested in a home setup so that we could record at home, mix at home, engineer at home, so we didn't have to pay anyone else. So we've ca- I've, I've 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 cashed out for equipment um but in the long run that'll save me money at the end of the day i don't think it's it's a unless you're gigging constantly which is obviously impossible at the moment and you're quite established it's really hard to make money as an artist even without streaming because even before you know when i was doing support gigs it'd be like 20 kid 20 quid cash or yeah you get paid what was it i've done a few gigs where they say you get um, like two quid per head that you bring along. And the person, when they come in, they would have to put who they've come to see. So if you only brought in five people or 10 people to a gig that's not even 30 people, you'd only get paid like a tenner. It's like, what are you putting the gig on for? What's the point? I've kind of resigned that I'm not going to make money from music full time. So it's not so much that I've made any decisions that change the way I make music, but... um. Just realising and being happy with the fact that I'll probably have to make money elsewhere. Either that's part-time or I do something for myself, like a business venture or something. You have to be you have to be spinning like a million plates to make it work. Mm-hmm. I was wondering um, if you thought that 
women in music find it get are hit harder? You know, at the end of the day, I can only really speak from my own experience. And I know that women in music uh, statistically have a worse time in, in the music industry just because they're taken less seriously. And my experience is that people don't always take your ideas on. Um, you know, they might like, like those sessions that I did in my early 20s, I was at the back of the room. So the guy's here. And so was a guy. I think I worked with. No, I didn't work with any any female any women producers. Yes. Guys always at the desk and I'm behind. And I thought, okay, that's my role. I sit at the back while they do all the work and I just come up with some lyrics. And then realizing that actually when it comes to writing music, I'm rubbish because I haven't had that experience. And what I think just harken back to what I said before about it being not being a teachable experience in the sense that I wasn't learning how to craft a song. I was watching someone copy and paste drum samples. It's like we we don't own our own voices enough because we're not told we're told that we're we're not we don't take it as seriously those guitar boys at school who were just really bad at guitars they knew everything about guitars and if you said anything they'd be like oh, you don't know anything about guitars so that kind of like elite thing and the amount of soft boys I've met in the music industry who proclaim to be like equal minded and everyone's the same and yet they talk to you and gaslight you and tell you in so one way or another that you're not good enough. I really want to chat to you about Fountain of Youth because you've talked about it a little bit so far and I can tell you want to talk about it. So let's have a chat about Fountain of Youth. Okay. Let's play it. Um, let's play. So what's this song about? Um, it's basically a big middle finger to a society and an industry that values youth over anything else. And it's not just that I feel like I have to look young. It's that... Um, it's that it breeds a kind of dissatisfaction with who you are always. So from the age of when you're in your teens, you're already taught how to moisturize and take care of your skin so that when you're 30, 40 years, years old, you look young and prepubescent. Um, it's being told to shave everything off of your body because women must look like children in order to be attractive. It's like, you're not valuable unless you look like a baby. Um, it's a finger at that and it's a finger at myself for being a mug, for being duped by it. Because even though I'm aware of it, I'm aware of a society that's always telling me to look young with all these serums and creams and roll back the hands of time. There is no fountain of you. There is nothing that's going to make us stop aging. What's wrong with getting older? What's wrong with learning and getting experience? What's wrong with having babies? Why is it as soon as I've had a baby that, I'm I'm not I'm not young and bouncy anymore. I will always be insecure about that. I think we all will in, in some way, um, because that's the world we live in. Of you. That's the new single by Eva. It's called Fountain of Youth. And uh, Eva is this week's Woman of the Week. She's a singer-songwriter from Newcastle. And I think you'll agree, she's absolutely incredible. Just what she says, I'm just, I'm hung on every single word, you know. Um, and she's got a new EP coming out in the spring called Hype Machine. Um, and having listened to the entirety of her back catalogue already, I'm so excited for what's to come from this gal. It is all recorded and mastered and ready to go. Um, it's called Hype Machine and Fountain of Youth is the fourth track, the penultimate track on the EP. Hype Machine is, is about our phones, about how as a culture, as a society, we're increasingly behaving and interacting on a completely virtual level. And my fear is that we're going to lose a sense of empathy with each other, less sense of communication. And, and it's how those social media platforms really have us addicted and I just I, f I find it it's not enough for me that oh I get to interact with my friends or I get to interact with fans because it feels so superficial I feels like I'm doing it to get engagement so that people more like pe people like the picture more so that people go to the Spotify more to stream more and then I don't make any money at the end of it um and then and this sense of like performative realism that we're doing like with every single trauma of grief grievance we, we put online for everyone to see and it becomes like we're performing in our lives and again it comes back to this dissatisfaction with who we are and who we're supposed to be and the whole art of comparison that exists online 
there's always another a person who looks better than you or that person has a nice top they ha- can afford nicer clothes the, even the homeware like kind of um, interior design section of, of Instagram is like teaching that your house is not good enough and so the EP is kind of about that it's a big record and it's I made it not to be consumed quickly it's not something that I expected to be on radio so I really appreciate you playing it um I wrote it because it felt important to me and it felt like something I really needed to say have you got any other plans for 2021 or is it just the EP that you're working on at the moment um release the EP we're gonna finish up um some other songs get another EP recorded so I'll have that to come out at a later date um but yeah I think I'd like to move home and see my family more spend more time by the sea the only last thing is I Won't Wait. I'm going to play that song. Mm-hmm. So can we talk about I Won't Wait? <laughs> I Won't Wait I actually wrote when I was uh, 20, 21. And it was always <clears throat> just acoustic on the guitar. Uh, everyone was like, ah, oh, it's great song. We love this song. Uh, and it, it just never got recorded, never got finished. And I couldn't find a, a life for it that it deserved. And then my, my partner was like, can I just have a go? At, can I just have a go? changing this up a bit and I was like yeah go on knock yourself out and he did and um and I was like this is really nice this is good and then we kind of produced it together and sort of half mixed it together and uh and I was like this is how I wanted to feel this is how I wanted to feel this whole time and the irony is I wrote it about him when we first dated (laughs) when we were like 20 because he sacked me off after a few dates uh broke my heart uh, not really. I wasn't in love with him or anything. Although he would tell you that I was. I wasn't. Um, but yeah, I wrote, so I wrote this really angry song about him. I was like, I won't wait for you. Um, and then, and then now I'm engaged to him. So I obviously did wait. Uh, yeah. That is the best story of a song. <laughs> yeah, it's nice, isn't it? It's, it had a nice ending, but the anger is still there because actually when I re-recorded it, I thought, well, I can't put the anger that I had when I first wrote this now because he's right there and I love him a lot. <laughs> um, so I had to find a different way to relate to my own lyrics, which was quite a cool experience. And uh, and it just, I just thought about not waiting on anyone else to tell me what was good about my music or how I should be as an artist, how I should be as a woman um in the industry like I was like I'm not gonna wait on anybody anymore I'm not gonna wait on people to get back to me I'm just gonna do my own thing and be in charge of my own life for once finally in true radio style can you introduce your song for the airwaves (laughs) hey this is Eva and this is I won't wait on gorgeous fm I Won't Wait by Eva. This is Gorgeous FM and that was this week's Woman of the Week. Um, And Eva's new EP, Hype Machine, will be out in the spring and the single which I played earlier, Fountain of Youth, will be out in the next few weeks. Keep an eye on her socials, which is Eva Official on Twitter and Eva underscore music on Instagram and she's also on Facebook. And just a little note, Eva is spelt Y-V-A. A huge thank you to her for her time we actually chatted on zoom for about an hour mainly about modern feminism but we just had such a ball and uh, i could go for a beer with her any time um she's awesome make sure you go and check her music out anyway on to